Beautiful pump here from 60, basically up to 65K in one daily candle. That's nice. Now, very interesting area. And this is a move that was driven by... Hello, everyone. Lark Davis is bullish on Bitcoin and explains his thought process with examples and data. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Jerome Powell delivered his speech, of course. We covered this a bit at the weekend, but dive into it a bit more today. He said, the balance of risks to our mandate has changed. We do not welcome further cooling labor market conditions, a.k.a. we need to start cutting the damn interest rates or the labor markets are going to go to hell in a handbasket. Some are already saying the Fed could be doing too little too late. A 25 basis point cut may not be enough. First cut coming in September. More cuts following. Alex here saying the Fed will start cutting soon. This is fully priced in, though. What has changed is the market increased in the odds of a 50 basis point cut in September. Now, Jerome Powell is going to have to make some pretty good arguments in terms of, you know, hey, we're cutting 50 basis points, guys, but everything's still okay. 50 basis points would kind of, to an extent, be admitting that we've lost control of what's going on and that we're now getting afraid that labor markets be cooling too hard, too fast, right? That's not good. So CPI is out the window. Nobody cares about inflation anymore. Unless it starts rearing its ugly head again, but inflation largely should be a solved problem. The problem now, the other mandate of the Fed, is what's going on with the labor markets and unemployment potentially increasing. All eyes are going to be on, I think, September 6th. Yes, September 6th payrolls. That's going to be the big one. If that comes in bad, markets potentially not going to like that, at least between that happening and the cuts in September 18th, is it, when the next Fed meeting is? So that's what we're watching now. CPI is out. Jobs data is in, baby. Let's go. Greg Shapiro saying, Powell cutting rates within a whisker of all-time highs of the S&P of 100 with credit spreads basically record tight with inflation running above 2.5 percent while employment is at a level that would be considered at maximum for most of the last 50 years of data is a massive capitulation that will utter in a tremendous hard asset boom as he is sacrificing long time stability and hegemony of the u.s dollar to help save the u.s government finances it's hard hard to find an alternative explanation for the speed of the pivot throwing out most fed reaction function orthodoxy it is what it is we knew this was coming eventually i thought it would happen after more pain was seen in the economy and financial markets first to give more time before inflation returned, but Powell is trying to preempt the pain in an election year and help his legacy of nailing the soft landing without any issues. I doubt history will wind up being so kind to that legacy. I predict a return to inflation before lower rates are able to save the deterioration in the labor market. Get your currency debasement trades on. There you go. Got your gold, got your Bitcoin. Interesting. Daniel here coming in saying most often, most often have a misconception that markets fall after the first rate cut. Well, that is true for recessionary cuts. Normalization cuts are extremely bullish. Assuming economic data holds, the Fed will deliver a normalization cut in September, and we will be entering one of the most bullish setups for crypto that I've seen in a while. Few are aware the next uptrend has already started. Don't fight the Fed. What's fascinating right now is that you have, you have either half the people saying like, this is going to, it's going to be done. We're, we're over. Great cuts are coming. And I see this chart that keeps getting shared around. You've probably seen it. I didn't bring it up for today, but it's this chart that shows when rate cuts have happened, followed by massive crashes in the stock market. Usually the recessions were already here. Usually the stock markets were already down when that happened, but You'll notice if you see that chart around, next time you look at that chart and you see a chart with all the red arrows pointing to like, this is what happens, rate cuts happen, everything goes to hell. Except for in the 80s and the 90s when we had multiple rate cuts and Armageddon did not happen. In fact, mid-90s is probably a very good, good times, by the way, the mid-90s. Pavel, let's talk about Pavel. Pavel Dura, founder of Telegram, just arrested in France after stepping off his plane. So this is a crazy situation. This is the founder of Telegram. And I know a lot of people are like, what about the Telegram network? Crypto coins, obviously. 
I know we all love our social media, but what about the price of my crypto coins, Lark? Look, my guess is that Pavel has set things up in such a way that the Telegram blockchain is going to be fine. The Telegram network is going to be fine. And this dude's got truckloads of money. I'm sure he'll be able to fight his way at least into something, right? Unlike previous um, people who have fought for the freedom of information and stuff like that, people like Julian Assange, who wasn't quite as well-funded, Pavel Durov's a, probably a billionaire. So he's got some money behind him, right? Plus, it becomes a, a situation where the Russian state is now going to want to get him back for political purposes. So there's going to be some stuff going on, all right? It's not such a clear-cut like thing. But anyway, basically, what France is saying is that they're going to charge him with enabling terrorism, with enabling trafficking you know, of drugs and sex and all kinds of stuff. And we probably just got the video to monetize. I'll talk about these things, guys. This is serious people conversations, right? You're not allowed to have the kind of conversations. Go, go watch a Mr. Beast video and be entertained, right? Bread and circuses, bread and circuses for the masses. Anyway, and money laundering money, of course, money laundering. Why wouldn't you be laundering money? Right? Basically, if you watch a recent Tucker Carlson video with Pavel, he's saying that, yeah, the, the security services have been pressuring him for a long time and trying to bribe people on his payroll and stuff like that to try to get back doors into Telegram. That they want to know what people are saying on there. I mean, look at the way the world's going, man. You know, you can't post memes in the UK anymore without getting a visit from the cops. What is that? They're arresting the founders of social media platforms because they're not censoring people. What's going on, man? It's getting crazy out there. That's what's going on. And you realize, what's all this have to do with Bitcoin, Lark? You realize why Satoshi faded away into the background. And maybe Satoshi's dead. We don't know. Maybe he just, just disappeared. He's just watching all this shit play out from the sidelines, just feeling like, yeah, 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 Pavel. Yeah, see, this is why I stayed anonymous, man. Just gonna sit here with my million Bitcoin until it is the global currency, and then I'm gonna cash out a little bit. I'm sure he's got plenty of wallets that were not tracked wallets. Anyway, besides the point, the need for decentralized systems is very, very real. I know, I know, we all like to talk about getting super rich with crypto, but part of what keeps me coming back to crypto is not just the best casino aspect, right? Which is, you know, meme coins and all that stuff sometimes. And not just the investment opportunities. It's all very exciting. Making money is great. I love making money. You do too. It's probably most of the reason why you're here. But to remember the reason why all this stuff exists in the first place, why Bitcoin exists in the first place, is because of this because of the massive censorship that we're increasingly seeing in Western nations in particular. I mean, my goodness, they've been saying, oh, look oh, at China and Russia all these years, man, you know, all these guys over there are like, yeah, but you guys are doing all the same crap now. Anyway, crazy. I mean, just think about it. They don't want you to have free speech tools. And thank gosh we have Bitcoin because Bitcoin is speech. Bitcoin is money and it's the most powerful computer network in the world. Nobody controls it. Nobody can control it. You can send money to anyone, anywhere, at any time. By the way, Pavel Durov has said most of his wealth is in cash in a bank account in Dubai and in Bitcoin. One of us. One of us. Okay, let's, let's continue. The price of Bitcoin. Gosh, we got a lot to get through still, so I'll try to blast the rest of it here for you guys. Price of Bitcoin, a crazy pump this weekend. Of course, due to what the Fed said on Friday, markets loved it. We'll see, of course, how stock markets open up in a few hours. Beautiful pump here from 60, basically up to 65K in one daily candle. That's nice. Now, very interesting area. And this is a move that was driven by a specific news story. So we'll see if we can get that continuation. But what have I been saying for the last few days? What do we want to see, right? Because back here, we had the MACD bull cross, which I was saying, hey, guys, you know, that's an opportunity there for those looking for going long, right? We're at the 200-day EMA. Bull cross coming into the MACD. If you see a bit of confirmation coming in for that, that could signal a new rally in the market forming up how long we last, how much legs it has, that remains to be seen. But anyway, we've now retaken the 50-day EMA, the 100-day EMA, and just come back above the bull market support band. Very interesting. Very interesting. 
I would not be surprised to see a retest back down here to retest these moving averages. Again, let's see how stock markets play out. Daniel says, it's interesting, a big flare up in the Middle East didn't crash Bitcoin today. Also interesting. I saw that. I saw that. And maybe, you know, they didn't want it. They, the powers, the B, didn't want to crash markets over that today. They'll do it another day. They'll wait. Anyway, very interesting place for Bitcoin right now. See how that keeps playing out. Great chart here from CryptoCon. I'm going to share with you real quick. This is weekly Bollinger Band width. So he says, soon I believe the Bitcoin cycle top callers will be left in the dust as business carries out as normal. This is the third and final low volatility phase that comes mid-cycle every cycle on weekly Bollinger Band width. Five months sideways price action is not new. Missing out on 2025 is missing out on 2021, 2017, and 2013, aka the big moves in the cycle when all the money is made. And that's the thing. Is all this recession stuff going to scare you out of your bags? Right? Or do you believe that the best of the market is still to come? We shall see. Uh, big news out of Sony, by the way. Sony is launching an Ethereum Layer 2 blockchain. Crazy. Come on. Like, look at, look at the level of adoption happening right now for crypto chains. All these giant institutions coming in, all these big gaming studios coming in, and Sony's launching. I mean, how long until there's a Facebook? Well, okay, there was the attempt for Facebook blockchains back in the day, maybe a better example. But a lot of others, there's going to be Samsung blockchain, and there's going to be Apple blockchain, and on and on and on and on and on. And what's interesting, what's interesting is they're not, they're no longer just going out and trying to build their own blockchains. What they're doing is they're building Ethereum Layer 2s. They're building on top of Ethereum. I mean, come on. Sony's a pretty big deal, right? This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Great for all things. All things Ethereum. Oh, except for the price of Ethereum. I mean, come on. Come on, Ethereum. What is up here, dude? Look at this. Bitcoin pumped $5,000 in a single candle. Ethereum's like, best I can do is 100 bucks. It's the best. No, nothing more than that, man. Come on, Ethereum. Come on. I tell you, sometimes. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Lark Davis. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.